Hi, I'm Gemma and I'm a senior practitioner at Winston's Wish in the South East. And I'm Ross and I'm a lead practitioner at Winston's Wish in the South East team. We've been thinking about photography and, mm. and the use of photos and pictures in our work. And I just wanted to start by talking about photography is a, is a hobby yeah. of yours. Yeah, I can't say I'm that great at it, but yeah, mm. I certainly um, really enjoy photography. Um, and um, yeah, I go out with my camera as much as I can, take photos of things I'm interested in. Um, my personal favourite is I really like nighttime photography. Um, so I like taking pictures of um, things that lit up in, in different ways. Like, um, for instance, if you went to a fairground at night, there's a lot of like really cool things that you can do with a camera and take some really creative shots. So. That's what I really enjoy, um, mm -hmm. but also like taking my camera out um, and um, taking photos of landscapes or if I'm out with kind of friends and family, particularly when I've got a little niece and nephew and you know, I really, um, you know, they're really pho photogenic, mm -hmm. um, but it's also quite fun because you can have some, you know, get some really nice um, shots of things. Yeah, right. so I tend to have my camera with me as much as I can. Right. So it's, it's something you really enjoy yes. in your personal life? For me personally, yeah. it's something that I really enjoy. I like looking at images as well of other photographers and um, looking at how kind of they've taken pictures of things. But also, you know, just seeing images sometimes, it, you know, they speak, um, they speak volumes even though they, um, they're not saying anything and they're very still. So right. I think what I like is that photography can be both really personal, but also they can also kind of convey and speak about things um, you know, on an emotional level, but maybe just also capturing times gone by. Right, mm. so they can be personal and quite universal Absolutely, sometimes. yeah. And I'm wondering how the link between that as a personal mm. hobby and um, how you've used photography or photographs in your work. Mm. I, think, I think that one's a, an interesting one because sometimes um, I think maybe using photography in, in my work with children and young people is maybe kind of the young person has to have an interest themselves. Right, so it so comes I, from them. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So I can think of maybe some young people that are maybe taking um, photography GCSE and that, you know, they, they've got coursework and things. And it's a really good link that we can make, you know, that we've, we share something in common and I can explore with them what their passion is about mm -hmm. and what they like and what they don't like. Um, but also maybe using photographs more so can be mm -hmm. kind of a natural part of our work in terms of memory work with families and oh. children. Um, and also um, I'm really keen on kind of how, how you can use photography to tell a story or to capture a moment that conveys something. So I have in the past maybe got young people to think about um, if they wanted to say something but they don't want to say it with words, how might they do it in a different way? So oh. photography is a really good way of thinking about that. Um, yeah. But I think that's something that really needs a young person that's interested right. in it. But I think kind of, you know, mobile phones have really helped with that because actually people take a lot of photos nowadays yeah. and, you know, there's like Instagram stories. So social media can be a good thread um, to think about that with young people right. particularly and children about, you know, what sort of photos do they have? What does that say about, you know, I think Snapchat, their stories, you know, and what right, comes so up there. Right, so telling a story through absolutely, their Absolutely, yeah. So and I'm also really, that's really immediate, isn't it? They don't need all the equipment. Yes. The person have got a camera. Yeah. And so obviously at Winston's Wish, we meet families often after somebody's died. So, mm. you know, young people often express how they're feeling, maybe not even realising that they're doing that sometimes. And so, you know, for some young people putting kind of how their day is or what's happening to them that week, you know, can be very much part of their kind of Instagram right. or Snapchat kind of storyline. So, sure. you know, you can even look back where appropriate to think about well, what might have been going on at that time and, you know, what what are people maybe knowing or not knowing um, or yeah. did you want them to know about you on that particular day, that kind right. of thing. Hmm. And what, coming into my head, I was thinking, when you said about photographs that the young person might bring. Mm. I suppose photographs of the person they've lost is, is a bit... Absolutely, thing. yeah. So I think when, when often when we meet families at Woodson's, which sometimes when they call that helpline, you know, they're, they're asking a lot of advice about what they can do at funerals and things. Mm. And I think I would say that probably 99% of the families that I meet, you know, um, looking through photographs is a big part of the ritual in preparing for uh, a funeral and how to say goodbye to someone. Mm. Um, but then also kind of it, it tends to continue um, in terms of, you know, maybe families collect all the photos they have, they might make books out of them or, um, you know, 
things like Facebook where you know you can get um, somebody's Facebook page memorialised because actually it contains photographs that they know they won't you know they can't make any more of those so yeah. Yeah. I think it there becomes an element of like looking back but also protecting what they've got right. um, and yeah and also I think maybe photographs in our work so often you know when I meet a family when I think it's appropriate I always ask if they have a photo of the deceased person then actually you know can can they bring that in who are they who are they remembering and what right. photos do they have um, some sometimes so there are some families that sadly don't have many, if any, photographs. Sometimes maybe the person who's died didn't like being in a photograph. Um, and that can be really difficult because then, you know, they have lots of kind of memories knowing that the person might have been in or around, but they don't have their face right. on the picture. So um, I, think, I think what comes up is that it's such a unique thing that actually what I'm trying to do with a family is tap into you know, the, the unique relationship they have with the person, but also how have they remembered them and how could they do it a bit more or less. Um, right. So, yeah, and I, I think also with photographs particularly, mm -hmm. often, you know, something we might hear from families, it's quite common is, you know, um, somebody dies and suddenly a lot more photographs go around the house and then families, for one reason or another, hit a point where actually seeing those photos become too much of a reminder and so they go away again and so yeah. some of the work at Winston's Wish that we're doing is trying to help process some of the emotion that comes up right. you know the sadness or the, and the loss yeah. um, and why it's difficult to see an image um, and help kind of work through that and, and with the hope that maybe actually they can work through some of those feelings and, and be able to reconnect with all those memories again. Right. Mm. So that, that photograph, those photographs like um, act as a trigger sometimes for those emotions. Absolutely, yeah. 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 Okay. So I think that for me kind of just says about the, the power that images have yeah. um, and they're a lot more accessible so often, you know, often when we, you know, even myself, I'm out and I can take lots of photos and I'm like, yeah, and I discard this one and oh, I really like that one but actually what, you know, maybe we're not thinking consciously at the time that if there's other people in there, um, you know that actually later on that might become precious so to kind of reconnect with some of that's right. really important um, and particularly where you know if families are struggling with with difficult feelings for whatever mm -hmm. reason then sometimes those memories can serve to help reconnect with kind of more positive aspects of a person that's died and experience but also to really think about well, what might have been going on at this time that might have been difficult maybe it's about difficulties in their relationship mm -hmm. but, but also maybe if they're somebody was ill you know what were the family dealing with so we, you know again there's kind of like real layers that um you know when when we meet a family that's what we're trying to work out is you know what's it like for you in this moment and, and are you remembering this person if so how can we do a bit more of it that's where photos can come in or is it something that is really difficult um and what might we be able to do to to work through some of that okay thank you it's all right <laughs>